Hey guys, it's Jack from the Teenage Techie, and today we finally have the Galaxy Nexus fresh out of the bo the FedEx box. So one thing I want to say about this this uh, box is that it's it's really well designed, and it kind of reminds me of the simplicity of this box. Anyway, so let's get this maybe open. There we go. First thing I can say is that it's really white light, although it'll be a little bit heavier with the battery in it. Take pry off this part. You got your Galaxy Nexus quick start guide. I guess the Spanish version. You got your battery. Your USB my USB to micro USB cable. And your headphones. And these headphones look pretty nice if you can see that they're uh they're like squishy in ear headphones. You pull off this part. You got your charging adapter, which Expanses has taken out the the uh, European version and put in a U.S. version, so it will work here, and I don't have to use another one. Let's get this all unwrapped. And um, put this aside. Let's pry off the plastic on the phone. Got this nice soft touch back to it. Pry it off on the. I'll leave it on the front for right now because we gotta just get it off back. In the back is this flexible uh, piece of soft, soft touch plastic. We can take the battery out of the thing if I can figure out how to do it. Take the battery out. And the battery is, if you can see, where is it? On this side, maybe. There you go. 1750 milliamp power. So it's a pretty big battery, especially for a GSM non LTE phone. Slide the battery in. Nice little click. So let me go ahead and slide this in at the bottom. And, whoops. Snap all around. And uh, you can see Google, Samsung logos, once again, nice. You can see it has a slightly curved screen, just like the Nexus S, and it has this little bump at the bottom, also like the Nexus S. But the soft touch back uh, is kind of reminiscent of the Galaxy S2. So peel off the front. Let's move all here. Let me get all of this stuff off the desk for a second. And uh, quick size comparison to the iPhone 4S. As you can see, it's a little bit taller and wider because of the massive 4.65 inch Super AMOLED HD dis display with a resolution of 720p or uh, 1280 by 720 pixels and uh, compared to the Retina display on the iPhone 4. And uh, width wise, you're about the same pot, perhaps a little bit thinner on this end of the Galaxy Nexus, but perhaps maybe just a little bit thicker on the end because it has this little hump. So put the iPhone to this side. And you got a uh, 1.2 gigahertz uh, OMAP 4460 dual core processor, which should make this thing really, really fast. You also have this this version of the phone, which is the GSM version, is Pentavan GSM and HSPA Plus, which will make it basically work on any um, GSM carrier in the entire world. So if you have a SIM card. And this thing is unlocked. You can just pop your SIM card in and you and go and use it as you normally would another phone. And um, however, the, there's a Verizon version which will have obviously work on Verizon CDMA and have LTE, and it'll be a little bit thicker because of the LTE radio. This phone has 16 gigabytes of storage, although the Verizon version will have 32 gigabytes of storage. Um, it also has one gigabyte of RAM. However, there is no micro SD card slot so whatever you get if you're on Verizon you get 32 on here you have 16 you don't get any more expandable memory which is maybe a problem for some users but it's not going to really be a problem for me I don't think because I have a lot of stuff in the cloud with my music and photos and all that stuff like I said before that you have the 5 megapixel camera with LED flash it shoots 1080p video and Google's and Samsung are telling me this is having almost no shutter lag instantaneous photos 
etc. Um, you also, on the front, you have a front-facing camera, which I think is 1.3 megapixels. And, um, you, you actually have improved camera software, which I'll show you once I get this thing powered on. And obviously, one of the biggest things about this phone is it's running pure stock Android 4.0 ice cream, codenamed Ice Cream Sandwich. So, let's go ahead and get it turned on. And uh, for, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is really clear. Like, the screen is unbelievable. You have your volume rocker here, valve button here, nothing on the top. You got your micro USB port here, 3.5 middle millimeter headphone jack, and a, a microphone if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it. And this, these three little buttons here are, are for what would be, I guess, a little charging dock. But we have yet to see that dock. So let me, come on, turn. Come on, oh, there you go. All right, English. And that says you have a bunch of different languages. English, United States, start. I'm going, since I don't have a SIM card at this time, I'm going to skip it. And let me sign in with my Gmail account. And it's signing in. And I do not want to store my Google account but I do want to keep it backed up. Well, yes. Okay, finish. All right, let's go through the quick guided tutorial. Home screens, you have one, two, whoops, two, three, four, five home screens. You can see this nice little animation and so far the phone feels really fast you can uh, go to the app drawer which has this nice 3D animation and also in the app drawer Google has redesigned the way that you put widgets on the home screen you go here and you have your widgets although if, you, if you're in the app drawer you can also just swipe to the side now add a widget let's go to bookmarks you can just put it on the home screen oh. not enough room Nope. Come on. Yeah, there we go. All right. And on for widgets, they, you can also resize widgets. So you can go make it just one, and they're also scrollable. So there you go. We can and to remove it, you just drag it up. Overall, the phone feels really smooth. What else can I tell you about ice cream sandwich? Oh, let's take a look at the back menu I mean back home and multitasking apps whoops I don't have any recent apps alright so Google it used to be that they had like you had physical capacitive buttons down here or sometimes hard buttons but Google's put them in the software on this phone and instead of a menu button if you go to your like any Google app if I go to okay yeah if you go to your maps You can see this little menu button down here or up there, um, and that's how they—I mean, that's how they do the what used to be the settings. And apps will be updated so they have little in the menu bar, and not you don't have to put them down here. So now, if I open up a different one, if I do messages, and I want to multitask back to apps, maps, I can go here, and I can also swipe away messaging and go home, and then swipe away to either side to get rid of that. So one of the things you'll first notice about the lock screen is that it's a new lock screen from Android which you used to be able to swipe to swipe a thing over from from the left to the right to unlock it or go this way to change silent or vibrate. But um, this ice cream sandwich however you have one way to unlock which you would just normally unlock the phone Hel and you also have Another, just if you go to this side, you can go straight to the camera, and if you just go up here, nothing really happens. Another feature of the lock screen is that you have your notification, you have access to your notifications up here. So if you had an email or a text message, instead of unlocking your phone, then going to the notification center and t clicking on it, you can just unlock, you can just pa press the power button, click on it, it'll open up the phone straight to the app. Assuming that you don't have a, um, a, a passcode on it because then you can't ac even access the notification center. Um, also, there's a new feature called Face Unlock, uh, which enables you to uh, scan your face when you set it up, and then 
just unlock it to your face so you unlock it it'll it'll look at use the front facing camera to look at your face and if it decides that it's you it'll open up and if it decide if it can't recognize you then it will then it'll say sorry I can't recognize you and give you your backup password because it makes you set up a backup password when you do it which has the um, sliding things like most Androids and you can also have a number pin um, so let's go to the camera app using the shortcut and I'll open right up to the camera app um, let's uh, look at the the camera app and uh, hold on let me get something to take a picture of let's use the box and a new feature is uh, well, not, that's not necessarily a new feature, but you have sliding zooming now. And you can touch to focus. And then click to take a picture. So if I wanted to take a bunch of pictures really fast, I can just... I mean, I just probably took like ten pictures there in less than like three or four seconds. So um, also, you can have all these different effects. Well, not, not as much in... Um, in uh, in the camera, but you can go to the video here. Oops, sorry, I kind of went off camera. You have all these effects like I showed should you. You can go like this, or you can just click on one. But you have even more effects in the video camera, and you can just click here, and it can either you can either do camera, video camera, or panoramic, which is also a new feature. So if you go to video camera, you it has. Oops, sorry. You have new facial recognition features like uh, squeeze, big eyes, big mouth. So when you're shooting video, you can have um, effects kind of like photo booth for on a, on a Mac. And then also panoramic. You go to panoramic, and you press this button to start. And you I don't have enough space to do it right here, but then you'd move it around to whatever you're panning and press it to stop, and then it'll render it and put it in the gallery. Um... So that's about it for the camera software. And uh, so that's about it for the camera software. And let's go and do something else. There. Um, the Android almost always had folders, as far as I know. So when you uh, w w but you it, you'd have to long press and then select folder, and then you can drag apps in there. But now, if you have something on your uh, home screen. Oh, let's let's make a games folder. I can go here, and then I want to put in another game. Let's say hanging with friends. I can just do it and drag it on top of it, which is a lot like iOS. Um, so it makes it easier to use. And you can see, you kind of have you see the first app, and you can kind of see the the app behind it too. And then to do it, you just click on it and select one of your apps. And I'm not sure if there's a limit on how many you can put there. We could put, we could put um. I don't know really, oh, Doodle Jump. We can put Doodle Jump in there too. And uh, it also, if you already had a shortcut on the home screen, you can also just drag it in there. There, and then to delete the whole thing, you can just. Oops! Actually, I'll show you. You can move stuff out of back out of it too, and you can name the folder whatever. And um, then you can close it and just delete the shortcut. Oops. So there you go, that's about it for the walkthrough of Ice Cream Sandwich, guys. The last thing I want to be showing you is the awesome screen off animation, which was in Gingerbread as well, uh, for the Nexus S. I'm not sure if any other Android ginger skin Gingerbread phones had it, but the Nexus S had it. It's really cool. Boop! Alright, thanks guys. I'll uh, see you later. And thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the Teenage Techie for more videos. And uh, be sure to check in for the full review of the Galaxy Nexus, which will be coming as soon as I can uh, have time to play with this phone. Thanks, guys. See you later.